Are you tired of having disappointing deer seasons? Do you continually half your off season work and start your season unprepared? Is your wife tired of you always being gone and never have anything to show for it? Are your buddies making fun of you behind your back because you never kill anything? Then shut up, sit down, and watch the rest of this video. In this video, I'm gonna walk through a preseason checklist of all the things that you should be getting done right now to assure that you have great results this fall. Each of these things are easy to overlook, but I promise you if you take the time to do them and do them right, you will have a lot better results come actual season. At the time of filming this, we're getting to the end of August. I like to give my hunting properties an entire month of staying out prior to the season opener. We're leaving in just a few short days for the first leg of the four for four tour, which I will be telling you more about in the days to come. I'm trying to get all of these chores wrapped up today so these woods can be as unpressured as possible now till the season opener. So one of the big initiatives this year is to have more places prepped and ready to hunt. This is a property that I've hunted for a couple of years now, but I've never taken the time to properly trim out these trees. And we came in here last week, planted this really beautiful food plot. It's already coming up real nice, but I want to have trees on multiple wind directions that are ready to hunt, that have good cover, good shooting lanes. So I got this one picked out right now. I'm going to climb up in the saddle. I got this brand new 10 foot Hoyman pole saw I'm really excited to try out. I wanted this saw for both preseason prep, but also when I actually go in and do hanging hunts on private land where I can trim out spots to hunt. So that way when I'm doing these hanging hunts and there's branches that need to be trimmed, I can have this compact saw, but actually have a really long reach. This thing will extend all the way out to 10 feet. So small package, I'm pretty pumped to try it out, but I'm gonna climb up here and do a little bit of trimming so that way we're ready to go this fall. So this is another perfect example of why you do this stuff in the summertime. I got all of my sticks up here, kind of to where I think I need to be on the tree. And I'm realizing that ideally I'd be another seven or eight foot higher. So I'm gonna have to bring in additional steps with me when I come in to hunt. But this is looking really sweet from up here. I'm gonna have to do some trimming on the lower trees just to give me a clear shot to the field edge. But I'm gonna be tucked into this little corner I'm gonna have really good access and I'm hoping that I can stick an arrow in a giant buck from this tree right here. So we got our tree all prepped and trimmed out. Now we just need to come in here with our saddles come season and we'll be ready to hunt. But the next things on the checklist are to refresh our minerals and to also change the batteries in our trail camera that we have on this plot because we are not gonna be back for the next month and we wanna have the most recent intel as we can heading into a season come end of September here. camera's connected now. There's a couple other things we want to do before we leave this area. Again, the goal is to have everything done and have, be as prepared as possible for season. So that way, hopefully we can come in here, kill an early season buck. But the next thing we're going to do is refresh our mineral site. We got a pretty good mineral site going. They're smashing that Whitetail Institute mineral and uh, we're going to pour that and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, we're almost finished here. So we came in here a couple weeks ago, made some mock scrapes right in the middle of this food plot. Just as a way to concentrate the buck activity, hopefully to be able to get a nice broadside shot. It's been raining a lot, so we're gonna come in here, just refresh the scent that we put on there. They're still hitting them, but I just wanna freshen them up, getting them all fired up. I got a couple different scents. We're working on a mock scrape scent test where we're comparing five different scents together. So I gotta use the appropriate scents that I used last time just to keep it consistent. So we're gonna freshen them up and then go get a milkshake and a burger, cause I'm starving. We've got a couple scrapes right next to each other. For this first one, we're gonna use Code Blue Rack Rub. That's specifically made for licking branches. Take a big old glob of that. That ought to do it. Maybe a little more just for we ain't gonna be back in a while. All right. Then we're gonna go right over here. And we got 
the Bomar Grandpa Secret Scrape scent, which smells like apple pie. Get it all over there. So now we'll be able to see if they hit one of these more than the other. Maybe it has something to do with the scent, maybe it's just location, but it's all part of the fun, all part of the process. So we have our kill tree prepped, trimmed out. We got our minerals refreshed. We got our camera batteries changed. We freshened up all of our mock scrapes. So the place is done. The only thing that's left is being able to get in and out of our tree as clean as possible. So we wanna leave as little ground scent as possible and also get spotted by as few deer as possible. So we have an access path kind of planned out and I'm gonna go through with the weed eater. I'm gonna clear a path so we're not brushing against things, leaving a bunch of ground scent or stepping on twigs, making a bunch of noise. And we'll be able to sneak right to this tree. Even if there's deer at the other end of this plot, we'll be able to sneak up into our tree, get set and have an awesome hunt hopefully. These activities might seem like minor details, but they're gonna make a huge difference when it's actually game time. So these are some of the things that we do in the field. There's also things we do with our gear to be as prepared as possible. So things like silencing any metal to metal contact on your tree stand or your saddle platform, shooting your bow, making sure you're practicing from an elevated position. So it's not the first time all year shooting from an elevated position when you're actually shooting at a deer. But there's a lot of things that we can do that are gonna make a huge difference when it's actually time to execute in the moment of truth. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.